Hey everyone, it's Adam. Time for another video on how to get the most out of Mix Effect. Today, we're going to talk about stingers. Stingers are animated video transitions. The A10 Mini lineup of video switchers from Blackmagic Design, however, do not have native support for stingers, unlike the higher end models, such as the A10 1 and 2ME Production Studio 4K, the 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K, the TV Studio Pro 4K, and the Constellation 8K. Now, some people in the community, such as Ryan Summerfield, John Barker from Here to Record, Doug Johnson, and Keith Bennett have all produced videos on how they implemented stingers for the A10 Mini lineup using techniques such as cycling through multiple images in the media pool via a macro or controlling a hyperdeck with a key fill video. I posted links to their videos in the description down below. That said, with Mix Effect 1.4 and higher, you can use a single image in your media pool and the upstream here DVE to create your own video stingers that look like this. Pretty cool, huh? Let's dive into how I did this. First, let's take a look at the upstream here on my ATEM. We're gonna take the advantage of the new animated DVE features in Mix Effect 1.4 to create a button and companion that I can press to perform the stinger transition. First, we need to determine which upstream here to use. On the A10 Mini Extreme, there are four upstream keyers, but only two of them can be set to use the DVE or the flying key. In this example, we're going to use upstream keyer 2 set as a Luma keyer. We'll set the fill source to media player 1 and the key source to media player 1 key. Over in the media section, you'll see that I've selected fill index 13 mix effects stinger as the still for media player number 1. For the stinger, the animation will start with the graphic hidden in the middle of the screen. So we're going to set the position to zero and the size to zero. And you can see I'm going to set the size all the way to zero. We're going to turn off the mask and set the pre-multiplied to off with the clip set to 13% and the gain set to 70%. Now, let's scroll down to the automation section at the bottom of the page. We're going to want to copy and paste the details for the Luma full OSC command. We're going to turn off the duration as well. And you can copy this to the clipboard by just clicking the little clipboard icon right here. Now, let's switch over to my Mac, where first I'm going to show you the graphic that we're using. This Mix Effect PNG logo is huge, clocking in at over 8,000 by 7,000 pixels in size. It's transparent everywhere except for the logo. And again, I've uploaded it to media slot 13 on my ATEM Mini Extreme. Moving over to Companion, I'm going to copy and paste the path and the argument list into a new companion action using the OSC send message with multiple arguments action. And this is part of the generic OSC module. And since this is the starting point, make sure the duration is set to zero. It's the second to last argument. Back in mix effect, the next step is to enlarge the graphic over the course of one second. And this will represent the end point of the animation before we perform our cut transition and set the upstream keyer 2's on-air status to false. So I'm going to turn on the flying key here and you see that the thing has already been set. The size is set to 5.5. Now the slider here only goes from 0 to 3 but the actual value for a size can actually go all the way up to 99. So to enter larger values you can just double tap on the little text box and enter 5.5 and hit return. Now scroll back down to the automation section and tap that and we're going to make sure that the duration is set to 1000 milliseconds and we're going to set the style to cubed. Okay? And then we're going to copy this to the clipboard and we're going to go back to the Macintosh and paste that into a second send message with multiple arguments OSC action down here. Now it's important to note here that I'm setting a delay for this action to happen after 200 milliseconds and that's because companion sends all these commands uh, at the same time, unless you set a delay. I'm doing a lot of pre-configuration. I'm actually using upstream keyer 4 with the flying key. And remember how I said you can only have two flying keys active at any time, or DVEs. And I'm already using one for the animated stinger, and I'm using a second one for the upstream keyer that you see in the upper right corner. So I turn off key number 4, um, and I also turn off the flying key for key number 4. I turn on the flying key for key number 2. I set the media player number one, the still index to 13, which is my big logo. I set the style option here, number two, to the Luma. I set the starting point for 
the flying key and I set the honor status to on and it's okay it's on because it's hidden, the size is set to zero. And at that 200 milliseconds, I start the transition. At 1,200 milliseconds, I'm actually going to do a cut transition. And that's actually 1,000, the duration of the transition, plus the delay, 200, so that's 1,200 milliseconds. Then I turn off the option here at, after 1,300 milliseconds, and I do some cleanup right here, uh, 1,400 and 1,500 milliseconds to kind of reset the option here number two. So when you have all that done, and you press the companion button, you get a singer transition that looks like this. Now, you'll note here that I have a mix effect in Stinger right here. And what that's doing is that's actually setting the mix effect logo to start really big and it comes in and does the cut. So take a look at this style. And again, and compare it with the original style. And you see here, if we take a look, I'm actually doing the cut transition after only 500 milliseconds. And the reason why I want to do this is because if you do a larger delay, you'll see that the effect looks like this. The cut happens while the mix effect logo has gotten smaller. So you see this kind of like jump cut, which is not very attractive. So I'm going to turn this back to 500 milliseconds. And you'll see again, when you do this, it's kind of like a seamless cut, just like that. Now, if you wanted to do all this from mix effect without companion, you have a couple of options. The first is to run a shortcut. Keep in mind that when you run a shortcut, things happen sequentially in a shortcut. So it might be a little slower than pushing a macro button or a companion button. But you do get powerful features in a shortcut, such as conditional statements and the ability to query the state of the ATEM. The second option is to use the flying key and a macro. And the way that works is that you set an A point and a B point for your flying key or your DVE, and then you run it to A to B or to B to A in a macro. Then you add a macro pause and you do your cut transition. Now, the downside to this is that you won't be able to take advantage of mix effects, fancy animation styles, and you might have to dicker with the XML macro file to get it to work properly. But here's an example of how that one works with the mix effects stinger out and the mix effect stinger in. So what have we learned today? With mix effect and companion and shortcuts, or just with the flying key and macros, you can create an animated stinger for your ATEM mini switcher. As a bonus, here's an example using the sp a spiral image as a stinger graphic. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. Also, remember to rate Mix Effect on the App Store and leave a review. I'm really looking forward to seeing all the different types of animated stingers that you create using this method. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.